almost, almost real. It's with Justin and friends. Justin and friends, and today I am with Vanessa. Though we want to thank Chisel Studios out of Atlanta, Georgia, for doing this for us. Yeah. Yes, very, very much appreciated to Matt and Chisel Multimedia. They're good, aren't they? Oh, and thank you, Justin, for having me on your show. Well, thank you. You know, I just want to sit here and look at you. I don't know what you do, but I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm a surprise guest today, and, yeah. um, and, I, and I just had the pleasure of meeting Justin. Um, my name is Vanessa Hunley. I'm DJ Audio Prism. I have Whoa. been a DJ, and I was, a, <clears throat> let me say it in a long way so everybody that doesn't know the term can do it. Uh, I'm a disc jockey, a video jockey, and a karaoke hostess and MC for events um, all around the city and venues as well. So and I'm just, uh, I'm just amazed at all the things you do. <laughs> How do you wrap your mind around it? Oh, lots and lots and lots of practice and training. I think. I heard one time that it takes 10,000 hours to become an expert at what you do, and uh, and I've, I've been doing this for 16 years now. 16 years? You don't even look like you're... How old are you? <laughs> yeah. I just turned 40 this year. You just turned 40? Yes, I did. Whoa. So, you know, good good, good genes, I'm about to say. I mean, maybe we got something yeah, to share here. We both yeah. got that smooth skin kind of thing yeah, going on like here. That. You know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, so, um, tell me, how did you get into this whole music DJ thing? Well, I always had a huge love of music, and uh, when I were you was... a groupie or anything? Were mm -hmm. you a groupie? A groupie? Oh, a groupie! Oh goodness, no, 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 no! I was a band geek, huge oh, band geek. Okay, <laughs> you know? okay, okay. Um, plus, you know, my formative years when I was younger, I listened to a lot of Casey Kasem and the American Top Forty oh, every yeah, Sunday. Yeah, and, yeah. And I uh, just really loved so many different music kinds of music. And my dad had an eight-track player and records. And cool. so I listened to a lot of different everything, surf music wow. and some good rock and roll. And, and then, of course, like the, the pleasure of the 80s and the pop explosion. And I'm a huge disco yeah. fan. But the first club that I learned how to, the club I learned how to DJ it was a club called Bell Bottoms, which was a disco Bell club. Bell Bottoms, that sounds 70s. A very 70s. Uh, they yeah. played set, their format was the 70s to the mid 90s. So Close. I learned a lot there. And then my first real big job was at a place called American Pie. Uh, which oh. was a big party bar in the Sandy Springs area, and their music format was the 50s to current, so I learned so much more there. Wow, you um, really got history. I do, I do. I what's your thing? Okay, time. right now, what's your newest favorite song right now? Uh, my newest favorite song is really a toss-up between, uh, between Portugal the Man's Feel It Still, because I am Feel just a still. huge, huge fan of that song. And I'm um, also a fan of Dua Lipa and <laughs> like, like, like what? Uh, New Rules and New uh, Rules, okay. her, well, I can't say the name of her other song, but it's a really, really good song. And if you're a Dua Lipa fan, you know it. Um, is that alternative <laughs> music, would you call it, or what? Um, Portugal the Man is uh, kind of like a, a pop rock kind of pop sound. Rock. And the okay. feel it still almost has like a 60s uh, sound to it. Okay. And then um, with Dua Lipa, she's a, a little bit more of a um, almost like a tropical house kind of sound. A little wow. a, a little flair of Latin, but it's got a really, really nice bass line and groove little, to Would it. you say a little Gloria Estelgon? Oh, or? always. Yes, yeah, Gloria yeah. is just amazing. And I've been a huge fan of hers because she has bounced back from so much adversity. Oh yeah, one of my friends was on that bus when that bus had that accident. A wow. Canadian friend of mine, Chaz, Chaz Elsner. Oh gosh, yeah. he was right up there. He yeah. was an opener, opening act for her. Yeah, he's good. Uh, from Chicago. Wow. What other musicians have you gotten to meet? Uh, I worked with Tercy Sledge, oh, he's Loretta Lynn, great. Leon Redbone, oh. Sawyer Brown. I can't, uh, I, not one you've little, mentioned yet, I don't know. Little Dan. Little Rudder <laughs> Dan. Did I say that? Yeah, I don't know if I said that or not. Uh, um, I don't think the guy, me. I don't think this guy's uh, paying attention. Yeah. But uh, anyways, uh, no, I, I've been uh, doing a few, you know. And a lot of not no name acts, but to me they were good, really good. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I'm discolored still. I don't know why. 
Uh, you know, the music business, it's like so many other entertainment businesses, it, it really can kind of boil down to who you know. Uh, it's almost more than the talent you have, although sometimes the person that you don't know, I, that's why I went, um, I would say like when I'm a room, even if I'm playing to five people or 5,000, I always play like I'm playing to 5,000 because you don't uh -huh. know who one of those five people could be. You're they right. could be your next gig or your next big break. Or You're absolutely anything. right. So That's true. Allowing yourself to become lazy or apathetic or bored or any of those things are right. not going to help you. No, you not, at all. Ever, not at all. So, yeah. so had you uh, ever done any DJing with some famous DJs? I actually did not go the touring route. Um, there was a, a time some years ago when I actually got to DJ with uh, Tia Donelius Jr. Uh, wow. at the Havana Club. He came in and he, um, I got to open and then him and his DJ did a live set and that was a lot of fun. Um, cool. You kind of go a lot of routes in this business. Uh, mine tended to go more towards, in my early years I did a lot of club residencies because I was a single mom and consistency was key. I needed to know that I was going to be making money. And, right, right, right. But right. as she grew and so got So steady older, gig was good. Yes, yes. Steady gigs make a huge difference. Right. And uh, what is, and your child how, is how old now? <laughs> She's 22 now. Really? <laughs> yes. Really? Yes, I was, I was an early starter. Um, and that, um, but she's been a blessing every step of the way and a huge inspiration. What a great nun. You had a career in show business and you had a child and you raised that child. That is awesome. Yes. That says something about you. Absolutely. And another reason I chose to never go on tour, I had a couple of times that people would ask me to go traveling with them, but, uh, but I didn't want to leave her to go on the road. I was, there's only one chance I'm going to get to see her grow up and there's, you know, now she is grown up. So now I have the opportunity. I went to Florida earlier this year and cool. did another event. Cool. I've traveled to a few other states in the southeast. Would you as like well. to go to Cancun with us when we go to Cancun? Absolutely. Right. We'll get your DJing down there. <laughs> I then know. you can send your daughter an Instagram or whatever they call it. <laughs> There's so <laughs> many names for it now. Shoot. You're awesome. <clears throat> Thanks. I'm so glad you're on our show. I saw you when he had that prison show. At the Audio Prism show. Audio Prism. Yes, because I am DJ Audio Prism. My company is um, Audio Prism Entertainment. Uh, I've just set up a Mixcloud account, and so now I've been uploading mixes that I've been recorded that I've recorded live over the last uh, several years, um, just to kind of showcase what happens in live situations. And they, they it's all over the map. <clears throat> Excuse me. Welcome to Georgia, summertime, pollen, yay. <laughs> so. Well, you are yes. you're really great to have as a guest. Thank you for being my first guest in Atlanta, Georgia. Well, at I this wonderful that. studio. You're awesome. You got a great amount of talent, and I know you're going to keep on keeping on and doing good things and entertaining folks. I would absolutely love to have you come by one of the shows one day. You know, I dig that. We can absolutely have you come in as a special guest. Well, that'd be cool. <laughs> Throw you on the ones and twos a little bit, as we say. I dig that. <laughs> hey, folks, we'll be right back after this commercial, and then we're going to be talking to another good friend of ours, and she knows who he is. Oh, I absolutely Mr. Dan do. Glazier. <laughs> he has a TV trouble. show on this channel. <laughs> Woo! -wee. This here's Jenny J on the J Justin and Friends show, Almost Real. Listen, folks, I got another safety tip. I guess you could call it safety tip number three. Right here, we got a beautiful Dev Dirt Devil Swivel Glide MVP vacuum cleaner. These are good when you want to clean up your dirty house, look, or your dirty trailer. I tell you what you gotta do though, you gotta be careful with these things. Cause say for example, if I took my hand and stuck it right there, like that, right there, see? And then I got a friend of mine turn on the vacuum cleaner, my hand might get <laughs> This is like living in an alternate universe. Here I am now interviewing the guy that I was on his show earlier, what? Mr. Dan Glazier. I can't believe you're here, Dan. Uh, you awesome. know, I gotta tell you, you need your own show. You're very good. I was just watching you previously with um, Vanessa. She's great, though. She can make anyone look good. She, that was kind of cheating a little I bit. I noticed how you weren't looking at her face. You were looking at other things. I was, uh... Seeing in myself, this lady is stylish, she's cool, and she's got class, and she's talented. And I hope you weren't getting a witty. <laughs> 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 
thank you, Dan, for taking my show or your show all as well. That's, that's why it says that's, comment, that's why he's a, No, Dan, is, Dan, I want to say something. Yes, sir. I admire you for one really great reason. What's that? You started comedy on this network, and you were the one that opened the door for so many comedians. I did? Yes, you did. How did I do that? Comics on Terrell. Terrell, that's right. Comics yeah. on. How long has that show been on now? How long has it been on? Um, four years, I think. Four years? Now, what, what was your first show? Who was your first guest? First guest was a guy named uh, Joel Byers. He's a good comedian here in Atlanta. Uh, been around a long time. Teaches a comedy class. He Whoa. tours some. He does pretty well. Cool. He does pretty well. Um, I was going to ask you a question. I can't no, no, you can't oh, but, um, I know this is my show, Dan. I asked the questions. Okay, go ahead. You had your chance. You're very good. He, you really, he I, beat I, the I, show. What, what I Mike. want you to know is I have another question I want to ask sure, you. Sure, go now, ahead. Are you a comedian? That's my question. Oh, I do stand up. Yeah, I do it. Okay. When I was 50, I sat for about five years. All right. So when I five years ago, I could do it every night. All right, all right. Now I go out once a week. I make sure I do it once a week. That's awesome. To That's stay awesome. in the game. You got it. Keeps the, it keeps the he keeps the brain stimulated. Right. You know, do you do a monologue on your show when you open up usually? You know what? Uh, no, I don't. I. What do you? Well, I can't look at him. He's the one talking to me. <laughs> well, it's all right, Dan. You can do it. So oh, I don't look at him. I can't look. At, I can't be talking like this. Or ask hey. me a question. This looks awkward. Ask me a yeah. question, Justin. Oh uh, well, Dan. How do you like holding your hands like that? Who's right. going show? this way, Justin? No, no, Justin. <laughs> Justin, look here. I did used to do the jokes, but they don't work without a crowd as well. I, I know what you mean, but look, you know what I learned? What? As the guy I work with, his audience gets smaller and smaller as his career goes along. Who's that? The guy I work with. Yeah. He might show up later. Oh, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> I, I can't depend on Are that. you serious? Smaller, smaller each time? Well, I did, it's, a, it's a comedy show, Dan. You know, yes, I like to, I like I to insult perform, the guy. I was performing man. the other day. Yeah. After the performance, the, the comedy club owner came up to me and he said, Dan, I think I've been watching your performance and I think it's reached the next level. Oh, and I, yeah, yeah. And I said, what's that? He goes, retirement. <laughs> and, and then... Um, uh, see, I like that kind of joke. You like that kind of joke? Yeah, yeah. Get then I said, well, you know, you know, I've been thinking about quitting comedy anyway. He said, Dan, how can you quit something you've never started? <laughs> But he said, no, no, I don't want you to quit comedy. What I want you to do, I think there is a place for you in stand-up comedy. Oh, and yeah. I said, oh, where's that? He goes, sitting in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Man, see, I think he could have a career with or without guests. Oh, I have sure. a set. I, I, I could do uh, I like you, Nan. about you 30, got... 45 minutes. I, I do get paid once in a while. Did you, did once you know, in a while, not on. You know what's on TV this year, Dan? What, what's that? Now, you should be up on this. The new Gong Show's coming out. Uh, oh, really? I think you should go on the no, new Gong Show. No, you would be good on that. No, I want to see you. You know, listen, first. I was watching. I'll tell you what, I'll make a deal. You go on first, and I'll follow you. Uh, I'm on first, you're on second. I was watching you interview Vanessa, yeah. and it captivated me. Really? It's very interesting watching up. I, I don't like, should I refer to you as a puppet? You can refer to me as anything you want. Hunk of wood, a dummy. So you want my set. I've been happily married 30 years. Right. My wife's been happily married 15. <laughs> <laughs> and the sex is great as long as it's consensual. <laughs> my wife said, I love it when you make love to me while I'm sleeping. I said, why'd you say that? She goes, because at least I can dream I'm having good sex. <laughs> Hey, hey, Justin, did you, realize, did you know last... This is refreshing for me. I'm finally hearing some new jokes. Listen to this. Listen to this. Did you know, this is a true story, last week they had a holiday called Pig in a Blanket Day. You know the little hot dogs? Oh, yeah, yeah. They're coming up with all kinds of strange uh, holidays like Kick Your Dog Day, Pat Your Cat Day. Last week was Pig in the Blanket Day. Really? So I, yes, that's a true story. My wife woke me up, at, woke me up one morning and said, Dan, right. happy Pig in the Blanket Day. I said, what reminded you of that? She goes, I was watching you sleep. <laughs> and she said, you know, Dan, every time you jump in bed, you remind and pull the blankets over your head, you remind me of a pig in a blanket. So I said, so eat me. She said, you know, Justin, she came home the other day. She said, uh -huh. she said Dan, you know, in every marriage, each spouse should be able to have one affair. At okay. least one affair. Okay. Then she looked at me and said, your turn. <laughs> My wife tried to run off with an Uber driver the other day. Yeah. But she changed her mind because when she called him, he came too quickly. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that, that's got a PG. That's got a PG. But you know, my wife came home the other day. See, I post, Justin, I post a lot of, are you married? 
No, I'm not married. I'm a single hunk of wood. Okay, so <laughs> I um I put a uh, I put a lot of jokes about my wife on Facebook, about my wife and about my marriage on Facebook. Right, right. So she right. comes home the other day, Justin. And she says to me, Dan, I love your Facebook jokes. I want you to post as many jokes on Facebook about me and about our marriage as you possibly can. Okay. I said, finally, Justin. I said, finally, you realize these are jokes of love. She goes, No, my lawyer says they're admissible in court. <laughs> But you know, I, Justin, I love the news. I love, I get all my current events from a website called nakednews.com. Have you ever heard of it? I never heard of it. It was news. developed in Russia. It's a true story. Is it really? It's where, what, these, what be- it? well, it's where these beautiful blonde eyed, blue eyed girls reach, read the news to you while they have no clothes on. No way. Yes, it costs twenty four ninety five a month to subscribe to nakednews.com. Really? So my wife said to me, she goes, Dan, I'll read the news to you without any clothes on. I said, I'll pay you 50 bucks not to. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, but the biggest yeah, problem with our yeah, huh? You got some great jokes though. But you yeah. know the biggest problem with my wife's nice marriage is snoring. Do you I, do you have a girlfriend? I have one girlfriend right now. Does she snore? I don't know. Because <laughs> I know how long have you been dating her? A uh, short time. Short time. You know, Justin. The biggest problem of my marriage is snoring. When I snore, it just wakes my wife up. When she snores, she wakes both of us up. So the other night I, I was sleeping with her, and she was snoring incessantly, very loud. Right, and right, I inadver- ver- inadvertently grabbed her boobie, and she stopped snoring. And I said to myself, oh, i got to patent this. So the next day, I'm sitting in Starbucks next to this lady who's reading her iPad in one of the more comfortable chairs. She falls asleep, and so she starts snoring. Right. And I looked at her boobie, and I said to myself, do I squeeze it or do I not? So I squeezed it. It yeah. didn't go well. It's not what you think, though. She's stalking me now. She's 85 years old. She wants to be squeezed the other boobala. <laughs> anyway, that's part of my story. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking to Dan Glazer, who happens to be one of the funniest guys in Atlanta, and you probably didn't know it because he's always interviewing comedians. That's right. Do you have a joke, Justin? Uh, I don't got any jokes on my show. I just kind of bring on the funny guys and let them do the work. You kind of have a joke like about a girlfriend, like... Well, I bumped, I bumped into my ex-girlfriend's boyfriend on the balcony. Uh-oh, what happened to that? I heard him say, ah! <laughs> I like that. That's good. You're funny. Thank you. Well, I got one. He's fascinating. You're fascinating. <laughs> but that's only because, tell them the truth, Dan. Look in the camera and tell them the truth. When you were a kid, you wanted what? Yes, I wanted a ventriloquist. When I fell, I wanted a fresh, I begged my parents for a ventriloquist dummy. Right, and your parents did not. Uh, but would not. Would, uh, right, uh, did not give me a. So you just know, think, just think. This guy that I work with, his parents, he asked them for a dummy from the Sears catalog yeah. years ago. Yeah. They delivered. Yeah. Now, if it had been changed, we would be sitting right where you're sitting, and you'd be sitting over here. I'd be the dummy. Hanging out with me. I'd be the dummy. Yeah. You know, I found lonely kids. Look, teach them how to themselves how to juggle or do a ventriloquist dog. Am I wrong? That's true. That's true. And narcissistic people do stand up comedy. That's right. Narcissistic. <laughs> I did. I do know how to juggle, but I begged for a ventriloquist dog. Did you really? And my son did too, and I got him one. You I did? Got, yeah, I did get him one. And what kind is it? Well, I wanted to get him the Andy, the Charlie McCarthy doll. Right. But he Classic. picked out another one at Eddie's Trick Shop. Have you been to Eddie's Trick Shop? In is that in, in in Atlanta? Yeah, Marriott Square. It's great. They used to sell a lot of dummies. Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. and sell to a lot of dummies. And sell to a lot of dummies. Yes. I like that place. So, i got to go down. you got to take me down there. You know where it is, Dennis. He, no, he's a magician. No, no. we got a magician sitting right here. See, he, 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 this is the trouble with most entertainers today. I'm in town. I'm the guest. I have you as a guest on my show, and all I ask is take me to the trick shop, and what do you do? You pass the buck to Dennis. <laughs> well, he gets, a, he gets a better price there. Oh, well, I, I didn't did. know that. Well, no, I want to hang out with you, Dan. You're a cool dude. Okay, good. So, no, you're right. Oh, he, 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 he needs a show. Can't wait, you wait, give him a show in there? Florida? Who's there? Hey, Justin, I'm here. Oh, man, no way. Yeah, yeah, I got here. Here, I just got here. We're going to be right back after this commercial. Justin, you don't mind if I come over here? Well, I guess I had no choice. You're here. <laughs> uh, and uh, we're talking to Dan Glazier, and we are on Almost Real with Justin and Friends. And sometimes, Tito, I just know. We'll be back after this commercial. Arnishes! Salvador the Pirate here. Yo ho and a bottle of rum. I think pirate stories are dumb, but I'll tell you one anyways. There was a friend of mine who was swallowed by a whale for a long time. 
that a swordfish also was swallowed by the whale. So he took the swordfish and he cut a hole in the whale's teeth and he got out that way. He was a dentist. Now, if you don't believe that, I got more tall tales from the sea later here on Salvador the Pirate. Arr. That was pathetic. What, what's the name of that puppet? That was Salvador. Salvador the pirate. That did that little little blue there. Do you did use he, him anymore? Yeah, I still use him, but he, he's, he's got much more... Uh, he actually started rehearsing. Things have been working out for him now. You know, uh, we're going to have a, a puppet, uh, a regular puppet, Mark Merchant. You know Mark? I love Mark Merchant. He's he was, awesome. You know, Mark saw me in 1980 uh -huh. at a club called Hollywood in Fort Lauderdale, and he walked up to me and he said he was going on cruise ships. And he was a ventriloquist, and I, I couldn't believe it because I hardly back then I hardly ever met ventriloquists. Right, right. So to meet another ventriloquist was just like a thrill. Oh yeah. Yeah, and, I, and I've known Mark for all those years. Although we haven't been best friends, we've always bumped into each other here right. and there. And I gotta say, with all admiration, he's he's a he is a a tremendous he would be a tremendous asset to your show. Yeah. So what I think what we're gonna do is just like we we just you have him sit off the side and have the puppet, and then at the end bring him on. Yeah. yeah. I, I, oh, he's great. He's great. Mark would do anything. He's just he's just that wonderful entertainer. He's been on cruise ship for years. Oh yeah. Years. And he has ten different puppets. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got more money than we do. He worked cruise ships. We worked the comedy clubs. Come on. The cruise. Right. He has a steady gig on the cruise ship. Yes, he does. He can go anytime he wants. South America, Alaska. He just calls he up to. and can go. Yeah, he's one of those guys that's in demand. You know, wow. and that's an incredible part to, uh, position to be in in the cruise boat business. Yeah, he came on uh, before he's been on the show. Before. Yeah, I watched that episode. Oh, you did. That was one of the shows I, I definitely tuned into when I heard Mark Mercer was going to be on your show, and I loved it. It was great. He did a great. Yeah, job. He, no, he's good. I'm looking. I've been wanting to get up. We have Atlanta Puppetry Arts here in Atlanta. That's what I heard. Now where's that? It's at? incredible. Where's on that? Spring Street. Is it oh. Spring Street towards Spring Street? It's oh. on Spring Street. It's you need to go there, Justin. I gotta hang out there. Maybe that you meet a nice, nice girl. You meet a nice park. girl there, Justin. Yeah. But uh, I I want a them. girl that's not too high strung though. No marionettes. I called them to uh, see if I can get a, one of their puppets to come on as regular, but they never responded. They they're, went, stuck they went, they're kind of stuck up. Yeah. They're oh, they're the of, artsy kind of thing. Yeah, they're kind uh, of artsy. That's too bad because those puppets didn't deserve that. Yeah, the, so when I called Mark, I, I said to Mark, I didn't think he'd be interested. I said, Mark, you know any puppets that come on the show? He goes, me. Really? Yeah, yeah. He, oh, man. So I just, I, I did say, you, you could do it, but if you don't want to do it, he, but he was all excited, so he's going to come on every month. I, I love that. I love yeah. that idea. I think you're, you're, you're on to something. Yeah. Because the yeah. puppet thing is coming back. Well, well. Well, when I watched you and Vanessa, it captivated. I couldn't take my eyes off the screen. Well, I really couldn't. Well, really? Yeah. Well, that's, that's, a, that's a nice thing to say. And see, you weren't even here. I did that without you. That's true. I, I want to, I think, let me see if I can get it. I want to get a picture of you two together. Oh. Okay. Well, wait, you're our guest. Jeez. <laughs> Folks, I want to say, it is so cool having a comedian like Dan Glacier. Now, Dan, you got to tell me one more story here. Another and story? This, no, this is where it all started. The guy that was going to be on the show tonight was Jerry Farler. Jerry Farler could not make it. Unfortunately, <clears throat> he's in the hospital. So our wishes are out there for Jerry to, him. to get well. I talked to him. You talked to him? How yeah, doing? he's doing good. He's doing good? He's doing good, yeah. All right. Okay. He's fine. All right. And you know Jerry Farber. Yes. And you replaced him once before on this show. I and did. And when was that? I replaced him before? You replaced him once before on this show. And not this show, but on the He's one of the TV first station. people that came on my show. But right. when did I play? When did I replace him for you? Did you replace him? That's what I heard mm -hmm. on the way here. I'll he's doing real, man. I don't remember replacing him. My show. Oh, I remember you were supposed to have Jerry. Jerry Farley and, 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 and told us about you. Oh, is that what happened? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and then the yeah. rest of history. And you stepped in. Oh, I stepped in, but I had nothing so for my career. So this is the second time you stepped in for Jerry. Yeah, but I had nothing for my well, career. Well, now, he, Jerry, if you're <laughs> listening, Dan and you could go on the road a little bit. Dan needs you know to why I, gig. You know why, Justin, I went into stand-up comedy? What, what? I took a vow of poverty. You did. Hey, you know, Justin, <laughs> Justin, I have a mother, I have a mother lives in assisted living, yeah. and every morning I go and I tell her a joke to cheer her up. I write a new joke and I go to tell her. I told her a joke this morning. She said, boy, I wish you'd grown up to be a monk. And I said, why is that? She goes, because they take a vow of silence. <laughs> <laughs> man, this guy's killing me. Dan, could you write for me? You're a good man? audience member. You should write for me, man. This yeah. guy does such stale stuff. I could use some new material. Be quite just. No, Dan is very funny, and Dan has been uh, doing comedy for years. Do you write comedy? Too I only write my own jokes. I don't. Have you ever written for anybody else? No, no. no. 
Oh, guys, I want to slide this chair right here. We got a few minutes. Justin, I love you, man. This is oh, a great show tonight. Thank you. Get you. Vanessa in here. Vanessa, come on up here. This is really happy days are here again. <laughs> no, we've had a great time here on uh, Justin's Almost Real show. This is only <laughs> the second Almost Real show with Justin ever. The first one was with Johnny Van Zandt, a legend. And now we have a legend in Atlanta, Georgia, Mr. Dan Glazier here. And I'm thrilled that, that he was the on the show. Legendary DJ. And a legendary DJ. So I've yeah. been told. Yeah. <laughs> and and the unvarnished truth here. <laughs> oh, the unvarnished truth. I like her. That's a t-shirt right there. I was saying. Hey. No. Smile, look at me and smile. Smile, Justin. Look at me. Smile. <laughs> <laughs> you were some Tom Hanks on the red carpet. Oh, you're great. Does well, he take pictures? He takes pictures. Is this the end of the show? It is. Oh, I think this is the end of the show, but you know what? We had such a good time. I want Justin to come back to Atlanta again sometime to do an almost real show again, another episode. And he's got a rock star that lives in Atlanta. We can't say the name, but we will say that there's a good chance Justin pulls some strings, because I can do that. Yeah. He may be able to talk to the Godfather. Okay, we'll talk to the Godfather of network TV, of, of internet TV. And we will get this rock and roll star on this show. The next time Justin's in town. Well, yeah. That lives in Atlanta? Well, he ain't gonna tell you who it is. I wanna come see him. Who is it? We ain't gonna tell you. Okay. Because <laughs> you'll be calling up before we do it, have him on your show. No, no I wouldn't work. do that. No, so, no, no. Th this is a this no, is a no, true no. thing. Dan has had some of the best comedians on this show, and I can't wait till he makes this a box set, and I can buy the whole box set and sit at home and watch all the mm. comics on Pearl shows. <clears throat> Boy, and, and you don't have a very exciting yes. life. And how long? How long? How long did your show run? On the show? Um, just about two years. Two years. Yeah. So there's so two years got, of a yeah. So you got a box set out? Uh, almost. We're working uh, on. DVD. <laughs> oh, we gotta get that. I gotta yes. Get that. So it's gonna be. It's gonna be a trunk set. Yeah, uh, you have so many different music genres you like. That's what I like I about you. I adore them. So what much. I really liked is when uh, we used to have two cameras, right? It was cool because you could see the show, and then we could see Vanessa. Matt, oh. can you get two guys? We see Vanessa playing the songs. Yep. That was can you cool. do that? Do you have two okay. cameras? Yeah. Can that we do that? Cool. Sure. Oh, wow. Well, um, yeah, that was cool. That's like so behind the scenes stuff. Let's, uh, yeah, let's pay. We have pay. So every time she plays the bumper music, you could show her. Could You could do that, Matt? Mm -hmm. No extra charge? <laughs> Folks, this is not real. I, I say, in case you ever wondered what, like, we talk about after the show is over. That's right. <laughs> we started a little early. This, this is time. behind the scenes. <laughs> I, I did want to say one thing, though. When we go off the air tonight, I want Vanessa and I want Dan to blow a kiss to all the audience out there. Ready? Let's try. Well, it was like, I was like, uh, yeah, look at the camera, Dan. <laughs> that was like uh, the dating game, right? You got it. You got it. Hey. Let's go on a date, Vanessa. Justin. Yeah. <laughs> this has been Justin's Almost Real with Justin and Friends, and my friend tonight was Vanessa and Dan Glazer, a legend in his own mind. But That's he's right. here tonight, and I love him. He is a funny guy, and I learned a lot. He's funnier than just being a host. He is. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Ha, ha, ha.